This is it. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were called Christians. For the first time, the disciples were called Christians. After they've done all of these great things, just at the beginning of the birth of the church, here for the first time, they were called Christians in Antioch. Listen to what I'm about to say. It is not really about what we call ourselves. It is, however, what is revealed to the world that establishes our identity as Christians on the earth. It's not what we call ourselves. It's what the world sees that we are. You can call yourself a Christian, but they're looking at a devil every day at work. That was heavy. Remember what Jesus said in the book of John chapter 6? When he said to the 12 disciples, aren't you also going? And they said, no, Lord, where must we, we go? You have the words of life. He says, yeah, I've called all of you, although one of you is a devil. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Jesus, Jesus it's harsh. So you might call yourself, I might call myself, but the point is, what does the world see? They were called Christians. They did not proclaim themselves to be Christians. Because it's not in what you call yourself, it is what is visible to the world. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to labor that because it's, in, it's important. It's not in a title. It's not in a label. It is in a visible character. A visible character on all levels. Now, beloved, we need to understand this. We are not defined by the world. Please, this does not mean that the world defines us. Who we are is visible to the world. Whether Christian or heathen, they see the difference. You might declare that you are a Christian, but who are you really? Is it visible to the world? And listen to this. Who you are is not open to Christian opinion. doesn't really matter because all of us are supposed to be sons and daughters of God the problem that you see and that we have on Facebook today you see Christians just beating up on one another saying many bad things like okay what does the world have to do if that's all we do to one another we're not even because it doesn't even matter the one Christian feeling that they are better than the other Christian comparing themselves against one another no, 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 no. The world will look at both of you and see two people that don't know Jesus. When things are maybe not going well at church and uh, many of us, our family members who don't know Jesus, the reason why they don't want to serve the Lord is not because they have something against God. You take everything home. They know things about God, the church, the pastor, everybody. That's why they don't want to serve the Lord, because you are a bad representation of the kingdom. So they don't need to come to church because... <laughs> Does it make sense, beloved? That's why you're praying for your husband, but he will never get saved. You know why? You don't like being saved. He doesn't admire, he doesn't want to get to God, because you don't give him a reason to get to God. You are not with the Lord. All he hears about when you come from church, when you come from whatever, is complaints. All your family members that are not born again, all they hear from you is, you know, the pastor, this, the church, this. You know, you know, children of God, how? They're sitting and they're looking whilst you're like eating and talking all this nonsense. They will never get born again and it will be your fault. You can't pray for them. You're wasting your time. Don't even tell them about Jesus. Because everything that represents Jesus you detest. Don't even speak about our children. The children don't want to hear anything about church. Don't want to hear anything about youth. Don't want to come to kids' church. Why? Because you don't really like church. Why must they go when you don't want to come? This is so pertinent, beloved. It's so crucial. How can you speak bad about something that you are a part of? It's senseless to still be a part of it. 
you're making a fool of yourself. Especially the people that speak on Facebook. If you're going to be saying this about pastors and children of God and other pastors and so on, please, beloved, I would urge you, please don't try and be clever. Don't talk bad about other men of God on Facebook. You are exposing your immaturity as a Christian. That's not, that's not nice. It's not even Christian. It's foolishness. Please don't do that. So there might be something in the body of Christ, something in the church that is not okay, right? There might be something wrong. So if you go onto Facebook to speak about it and deal with that topic, my question to you is, right, who are you speaking about, right, is the body of Christ. You're speaking about them and the world is listening. My question is, what does that make you? God looks for the one, God looks for the one that stands on their own against whatever he has established. And God goes for that one. So if you're going to be speaking against the church, are you part of the church? Are you one of God's children? And if you are not, you have become an enemy to God. And whoever you are attacking on Facebook, God will charge you and take you down. Whether your point that you have is right, that's not the platform. You don't speak out of the house. What we believe and how we deal with our origin, identity, life, and death is on display to the world. I'm going to say that again. This is in line with what I've said thus far. What we believe and how we deal with our origin, our identity, our life, and death is on display to the world. You want to write this down because this is pertinent to you as a Christian. It is open because the world is watching us. The world is watching how Christians respond to trauma. The world is watching how we deal with COVID. We are more fearful than the world is. I am speaking to you at home. I'm speaking to us. It is time that we get to the place of becoming children of faith. If you're more afraid of COVID than the world is, you need to check your temperature spiritually. The world is watching how Christians respond to trauma that is COVID, unemployment, the economy, lack, persecution. The world is watching how we deal with this and how we deal with this will either show whether we are Christian or not. Because that's the only evidence. The only way how we will show Christ to the world is how we deal with the normal problems of life that everybody faces. Not how much you preach. How you deal when your daughter passed away. How do you deal when your wife passed away? How do you deal when you lost your job? How do you deal when somebody bumped into you and you don't have money to fix your car? What is your attitude then? That is the only Christ you have in you. Not when things are going well. Everybody can be excited when things are going well. What is the Christian's behavior when things go the other direction? Check. Let's check our spirits. What manner of people are these should always be the marvel of the world? Because how we behave when these things happen, when the world look at us, they will ask the question, what manner of man are you? You still remain excited even though you just lost your job. You still remain full of joy even though you don't know what you're going to eat tonight. What manner of woman are you that no matter what hell you are experiencing right now, you are still standing strong and firm in God the world is watching. It doesn't matter how Christians are watching. They're supposed to watch themselves. What the world sees makes the difference. Because the church has its own problems of comparison and competition. Those are the demons that the devil releases over the so-called body of Christ. 
that we spin in circles and cycles and never get to the place of accomplishing. Because we pay attention to nonsense. Amen? What manner of woman are you at work? That's where your promotion comes from. When things are bad in the economy, you, you charged up. You're ever ready to work. You're ever ready to do stuff. When everybody gives up, you are the one that pushes on and pushes through. What manner of man and woman is this? That's the difference because that's the question that was asked of Jesus. The disciples asked the question, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? The winds and the waves will obey you and me when we step out in faith and be who God desires for us to be. You will not, you don't need to fall flat when things don't go right. In Jesus' name. I mean, we're facing a whole lot of things, beloved. And I know you come from work and things are tough and you don't know they are retrenching and all of these kind of things. But you need to understand one thing. Your source is Jehovah. We are different, beloved. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We know that. It's possible to be in the world and not be worldly. I'm bringing something across. It's all building up. And this is so necessary because this is about world religions. This is our difference. This is our difference I'm speaking about. It is possible to be in the world and not be worldly. What does it mean? I'm not referring to dress code. I'm not referring to hairstyles and tattoos and money. I'm not referring to your genre of music that you're listening to. No, that's not worldliness. It's not worldliness. A worldly person is a Christian who chases the agenda of the world. The way the world gets rich and what's important in terms of wealth, what the world sees as blessing, if that impresses you, you are worldly. Did I hurt your feelings? No, you can. You can paint your nails black. That's you. Doesn't mean you are ungodly. That won't make a difference in the kingdom. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. This is what it means to be worldly. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. <laughs> Tell me if you see yourself somewhere here. Then we realize how much we all need God. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Did you see yourself? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such people turn away. So which means we should turn away from all of ourselves here. Some way or the other we are guilty. By grace we fellowship one with another. We fellowship one with another by grace. If you didn't see yourself somewhere there, you are Elijah or Enoch. And uh, within about the next few minutes, you might vanish. Taken up to heaven. Amen. What fascinates the world should never fascinate you as a child of God. I, I want to stay on that. You're envious of people that don't know Jesus but have money. These people extended their house. That person bought the TV and you're putting your husband under pressure for a TV. You don't need a new car. You don't, you don't need a new lounge suite. You don't need that. But because you saw somebody have it, somebody at work that's not even born again, you admire them. They blow your mind. And you even say stuff like, you know what? Hey, it's better to be with people in the world because Christians, excuse me, you are a Christian? <laughs> are you born again? Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? Because it's so easy for us to say somebody else is not a child of God. No. Are you one? Am I a child of God? Am I saved? Before I can check you out. 
This is important. This is a class, beloved. We need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And I just failed to say that. John chapter 3, verse 7. We shouldn't marvel at the achievements of the world. You shouldn't. If you're impressed with the world and you start questioning God because you don't have what the world has, you need to come back to God, speak to God. Let him fix you because you're wrong. God will never be put in to test. He will never be put in a position where now he has to perform because you are impressed with the world. Then what's the reason for your serving Jesus? If you're not satisfied with Jesus, your salvation, there's a peace, there's a contentment in your spirit, then you need to question yourself. 